We are on. Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Dan Pfeffer. And I'm Curtis. And we are back with our second loss uh, video on the SMC book. Mm -hmm. So we went on enter of the market and pricing model in the previous video. And for today, we're covering chapter 8 to 9, which is trade management. And I'm unsure about chapter 9. Even though we've covered this a few times, I keep forgetting, guys. So trade management and I do believe it's daily process, daily which process. will be our last chapters. In today's like second last, like Diane said, the uh, second last Friday video. So yeah, subscribe mm -hmm. and let's get into it. Yes. So trade management. Let's start at the beginning. So ah, oh, my eyes. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, zoom it in yeah. just a little bit. So chapter A, trade management. We went through all the concepts, so guys. So far, the authors. Now we will go into the trade management. This chapter will explain the different time frames used and also the overall management of your trade, your TP, stop loss, your break even point, PE, no, break even. Yeah, break even, stop loss, and etc. The time frame used, so daily, once a week to check the overall bias of the market. Mark the extreme zone pricing. So, so basically when you look, when you're about to enter trade, basically check out the overall bias of the market as this first point basically explains. <laughs> on the example above price is in a bullish as we can see the market reacted from a protected low which is here and it's demand the demand creates a big move to the upside the broke internal structure price comes back to extreme zone as we can see here so this is basically just the overall bias basically break of even yeah it says this the internal demand zone creates again and then basically it tests it again this is basically so you're always your first step when entering a trade is checking the overall overall bias overall overall <laughs> okay okay every day to check the bias of the market liquidity pricing point of interest which is your, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah point of interest, <laughs> which is your order block I yeah it's your order block yeah yeah. Here we go, and then there's the example. And we can see here's the, the point of interest I am just said, the four hour point of interest change of character. Mm -hmm. In the example here, it makes a change of character and comes back into its daily and its uh, our four point of interest, which is your order block. As we remember, daily is bullish as price comes back into an extreme demand with liquidity, we can expect a big push to the upside. We need to wait for the 15, 15 minute. minute. Okay. So let's go on. So this is basically the 50 minute as we can see, just wanna look at how it looks on the four hour. As you can see, change of character, it comes down back to its point of interest on the four hour. Remember this is the four hour, yeah? Comes down to the 50 minute. So the 50 minute is used for the intraday pricing, okay? Mm -hmm. The intraday means that this is the price action we will follow day by day or on a higher time frame bias. Mm -hmm. This time frame can be used alone when the four hour is in a range or doesn't show something clear, okay? So you will come to your 50 minute when the four hour is not clear for bouncing off a point of interest and so on. On the 50 minute, we can look for the structure, the liquidity, the point of interest. So as you can see, the structure, liquidity, and point of interest. Those mm. was said in the when entering a trade. So that's I think that's the, f the first three things you notice. And obviously, when you're looking at, at a point of interest uh, order block, we went over a few steps already in the past chapters where you need to look at least check four, four of the points to make sure this is a valid point of interest or or the block or the mind zone basically. Mm. So yeah, we can just see the chart form. They zoom it in, break of structure. Yeah, you have your liquidity, external, I would say external liquidity, and then basically comes to 15 minute, remember 15 minute point of interest, which is here. On the 15 minute here, price makes a change of character, which is here, I think this is your chart here. Because it was at a downturn, it makes the chart. And a break of structure, as we can see here, visible liquidity. Yeah, break of structure, visible liquidity right there. We have a lot of imbalances to fill and price will sweep all the liquidity very fast. So that's basically uh, imbalances. And we can just see, I can notice one imbalance here. Here's an imbalance when it comes down. So I can notice about three three imbalances. Uh, what I was talking about, do you see more? As here's the break of structure, here's the sweep to it, and then it comes down. I feel down. like the change of character is there. Then, yeah. No, here's a charge. Ch see, there's a C. It's just very small. Uh -huh. Because this is when it was on, a, on like a bearish and then it changed character, yet broke a structure. But okay, we move on. So this is the one minute time frame only example. Mm -hmm. There you can see here once again change of character, come on top, here's a point of interest here. Because basically came down after the change of character. Here's also basically the lower low. So yeah. On the one minute, 
it was possible to use the C1 model as we can see the price follows its ve is very stately. Mm. This was just a little explanation of the time frame. A complete chapter daily process is at the end of this book. Mm. Okay. Yes. Oh. Uh, it explains the details on how to take a trade from A to Z. Okay. okay, okay. When the market is not clear in those time frames, do not hesitate to change it a little. For okay. example, you can go on hour, on hour 3 or hour 2 if the hour 4 doesn't show good for okay. your eyes. Okay. I think I've only ever used the 2 hour like once or twice. I I've never used the Besides four like hour 4 now, I use like hour 1. Hour, hour 1 has been kind of like more consistent, like hour 4, hour 1 hour, but I've never used hour 3 four, and 2. Hour 1 is like, our, like the big picture that I would look at, mm. then uh, minute 15, minute 5, yeah. and the that's one that's the one that's been constant across, like, yeah. yeah. But okay. as I say, if that, if that like, oh, I mean, like, Dion is basically we use those one. But if it's not clear on those time frames, obviously use the 3 hour, use the 2 hour, if you can spot a better point of interest. Okay. Yeah. More theory. Yeah. <laughs> trade management. Totally besides the strategy, what all profitable traders have in common is that they manage their trade properly. Properly. Oh. Properly. Oh. Properly. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> properly. Following their plans, the trade management will firstly consist in having a nice stop loss. Obviously, always have a stop loss and a precise level that cancels the setup. Secondly, a precise take profit and also a precise partial profit if you decide to use them, okay? So partial profit is having a one, like taking profit halfway and taking the second profit, like when you reach the one to two level, but yeah. Secondly, okay, we've covered this. If you decide to use them, finally a break even level that indicates that you will set your stop loss on that level when your when the trade goes up, you will set your stop loss to the middle basically. You will not lose. This is just basically a win win trade basically. If well, you watched my first video, that's exactly what I did. Yeah. So we'll go on. What I plan, the trade management will change if you are a pro trend or a counter trend. Okay. It's important to take care of the spread on this depends on the broker. In the long term, this can affect the capital, okay? So depending on the broker, spreads are different. So we obviously use HFM markets. If you want to use that, link down below. <laughs> Plugging. When you sell the market, price triggers your entry point at the real price of the market. But your stop loss will hit at a spread level. If you have a zero pip spread, it's important to add that to your stop loss. Okay, yeah, I think we've, we've adjusted this. And it's not to get out of the equal level or a little grab of liquidity okay so because the spread sometimes could be the cause of your liquidity because you just have like that five pop and you get out or your, or your play or your trade can never be entered basically mm. if you do this so it's vice versa when you buy the market price will trigger entry point at the spread level this means that you need to add the spread to your entry price yeah Otherwise, price can touch your zone but not trigger you because the uh, spread, yeah, like we just said. Mm. I think some semantics or semantic, uh, semantic schematics. schematics will be helpful to better understand that. Okay. So, here's basically what he just said, but in a diagram version, basically. So, on a bullish example. So, as we can see, I think it is better to zoom this in. Here we go. So, what he just said, this is where your order block is, maybe on the one minute. Here you have your cover, you have your spread, basically. So, here's this. So, add the thing to your spread so when you make a trade add the spread to your order block basically as you can see here this is what the order just did here he added this small piece to his spread so basically this whole thing is his order block or when he enters this is his break even point where for example if the price goes up he can move his stop loss upper and this is where he will enter a break even point this is his tp1 and tp2 on the four hour 15 minute and this is on the one minute basically You're zooming out, I gotta read. Oh, shit, shit. I don't got my glasses. <laughs> me too, man. I need two. I need two. <laughs> <laughs> the break even will be set after two uh, minute one break of structures. The first uh, take profit or the total take profit, depending on you, will be the 15 minute structure. As we are in pro trend, this level should be fails. Mm, fails uh, too bad. The second take take profit is an hour four. <laughs> oh. Come on. Sorry I said it, I said it, I, I said it. Take profit. Uh, you know, I'll start again. <laughs> the second take profit is that hour four structure. <laughs> I can't read. Me too, <laughs> it's bro. needed to have both hour four and minute 15 in the same trend to reach this level. Okay, so what we just saw 
on a bearish example. So that, that spread and basically adding that to your entry point is the exact same, just opposite. I think everyone should have like bearish and bullish down by now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can see as your cover, protected stop loss as we can see. Yeah, you just add your spread to the real close, wait break even on the one minute break of structure. You have a TP1 and TP2. Yeah, so this small line is basically your spread, which is, it could be different. This depends, depends on the broker. On broker okay, yeah. So it could be Node 5, it could be one on a different broker, so yeah. On the sell one, we don't have to take care of the spread for the entry point, okay. But at your stop loss, will be triggered at the spread level. It's important to add it to your initial cover. The break even level will stay the same. And for your partials, you'll also need to take care that the price will hit the, that price will hit your take profit. The profit will be taken at the spread price. Also, basically, it, uh, when you enter your trade, the spread is not entered. But when you take profit on yourself, for example, as you can see here, your TP1 there's a spread real close. So actually, even if the price is here, you actually only you only get the profit of this, and the exact same here. So even if you close the profit here. Your, your second TP here, yeah, you will only get the profit is because of that spread. So, but there's no spread when you enter in a cell basically. Mm. And that the counter trend management. Bullish one too. Ah, this one needs to be in the bottom. Okay, but it's basically the same kind of protected break even. So, there's no TP1, TP2. There's basically just your break even and TP. So, just a different depending on which model you want to use. So, okay. The break even will be set after the minute one break of structure. The take profit will be on the next 15 minute supply as it, as it is where price is supposed to react before dropping to the downside. If your can you can you zoom in a little bit? Uh, yeah, yeah. If your big time frames are showing to you that you have a take profit on hour four mm -hmm. supply, then take a partial at the 15 minute supply and look for another one at the four hours. Firstly guys, pause the video because we probably like even me fucked up high up in the video so pause the video read it out for yourself like even when where we are at now so you can just do that mm -hmm. but you will notice for yourself when reading it out you might also a little bit because how the order some words throws you off man it throws you off but yeah as we they are said yeah we can see this is just your counter trend management and the first one was a pro trend management so basically depending on which one you want to use mm -hmm. so yeah what we just saw on a bullish example this is a bearish example the exact same stuff it's a if your big time frame are showing that to you that you can have a TP on the four hour. So basically, if your big time frame is showing that you can have a TP on your four hour demand, then take a partial profit at the 50 minute design and design design demand and look for another one at the four hour demand. Okay, so basically, this is where you depending on how you're going to take your partial profits. Basically, mm -hmm. so that is chapter eight, which is. Quite, it was a it was a mouthful, but we made it through. So go back into the video and make your own notes on it. So today we're gonna do chapter nine as well, and then leave the last two chapters for the next video, and that should end off our series. Yes. So a lot of theory. Chapter nine, daily process. Yeah. You're gonna need to zoom. Bro. <laughs> I need to zoom. <laughs> Firstly, to find your own daily process, you should understand that everyone is different. Mm. Me and you yeah. included. Yes. Some people will be able to look at the chart for five hours without getting tired, and some got uh, get tired after two hours. Yes. Hundred percent. I think like I'm like in between three hours. Yeah, three hours. It depends oh. also on the day, mm. how it is. So Monday we don't spend as much because you know Monday, yeah, Monday Friday. Monday, Monday I, Friday we don't spend. I think as Monday much time. No, I spend more time because I'm watching to make a trade because I don't trade now on the Mondays for some reason. I want to trade from Tuesday to Friday. As a trader, it's really important to know yourself in order to not make any over trading. Mm -hmm. Over trading can induce you to a lot of bad decisions and a lot of wasting of money. Yes. I know about the bad decisions. Luckily not about the wasting of the money. Have you over traded already? Yes. I, I think I have. I have. I have. A I've, lot. A lot uh, actually have over traded. When, you, when I... What you call it? I fucked up. I, I, I fucked up. And, and over trading. I trade like the whole account more. Yeah. Trade. And the revenge trading. Yeah, trading trading. And oh, trading. that's that's when you're trading with emotions. Do not trade with emotions. Yeah. Oh my word. <laughs> okay. Anyways. The sessions are also really important. We have spoken about this also in the past. I think I mentioned this in, like in the past also about sessions. We trade the London session, not the opening of the London session. We move from the London to the New York, <coughs> which is equal, like, which is proper for South African. If you have, a, for example, if you're not going to be busy in the morning, which the London session is always around. Four o'clock to like three, yeah three three, three three depending on daylight savings and stuff. It's always from three and in the land the New York opens at around seven. So we trade the London and New York, which I think most Africans would 
do. If you are across like somewhere else, we have a Nigerian audience, about a three percent Nigerian audience. So, <laughs> which is, it will be similar to South Africa, basically. Mm -hmm. So the best liquidity is during the London and New York, as we just said, on major instruments, which is instruments are basically your GP and stuff like that. The Asian pairs will be a lot of uh, liquidity during the Asian session, of course. You have to pick up on one or two sessions that you will be able to trade, okay, 100% focus on. So 100% focus for us would be, I would think, New York. And we will have around 80%. Like have we you ever traded the Chinese yuan? Nah, not at all. Yeah. Say, so, did you see how it looked? Yeah, have <laughs> you seen those charts? They no, look crazy. Bro. <laughs> this doesn't mean that looking at the chart for five hours, but being in the zone with you, with 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 you and your trading. See, this gets a person. Mm -hmm. Gets a person. With you, with you. This is you. <laughs> Out in the box. <laughs> um, the daily process will start by checking the different views that we've got for today. Mm. I also advise. That's him. Mm. Uh, to advise to pick some article about the pairs you are trading to know more about the fundamentals of these. Yes. Yes, that's very Definitely. true. If you are on a Monday, you can start by the daily time frame to check the structure and extreme point of interest. You can also take a look at the liquidity if you if it's needed. So basically liquidity always we oh there's always one of the points when you are about to make a good decision. That's why I say go back. If you didn't watch if you hear but you should have watched the first three. Mm -hmm. The first few chapters. And, uh, if you if, have chapter eight now already. If if you like wanna have any news now on the pairs that you're trading, um Exynos is a good app to also use because I used to use that as well and yeah. like they would update me on the day. Yeah but what do you call it? HFM also has a new feature. It's, is it's it? built in. Really it's the same as Ignis since we are affiliated to them, Mr. D. The exact same, I think it's I like it actually better. Because it gives you a little bit more. Do they also give you the daily like yeah, not, it's not like just it's not daily news thing. but on the specific pairs, like it gives yeah. you feedback on it. I'm okay. sure. It's like I think most most of the brokers does it though. Okay, I don't know why the fuck this thing is it. Thinking it's stolen. I'm thinking it's stolen. Okay, no, I was just now too used to yeah, excellence yeah. using excellence. Yeah. Uh, Especially but okay, like, sorry to interrupt you then there, bro. Yeah. But yeah, like what Diane said, get an app that basically tells you like more of the fundamentals news around mm -hmm. a specific bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me just show, 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 news, see so news. Today, what you're talking about, 10 minutes ago, <coughs> 10 minutes ago, the USD CAD uh, relies above, see, so basically what you were talking about, the Exynos. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as you can see there, guys, news in live. But yeah, we go yes, on. Yes, shift does it as well. Yeah, the daily time frame. So basically, your daily process, daily management, as you can see, you will check the daily, the daily, the diaphragm. <laughs> you will check the overall like uh, bias of the market. As we can see, this is basically on the uptrend, but it's testing. It's the point of interest here on top. So this is where you're gonna be mostly have your point of interest zone or your demand or supply zone. And it's like a one day chart. Is it the one day chart? The daily time frame. I think it starts at the day. Most he says it's a day chart. So this is a very, uh, very long term chart basically, as you can see. On the daily time frame, mm -hmm. price is bearish. Bearish, okay, because of this, yeah, because it bounced up. Price makes a bearish change of character, it comes back to the extreme supply in the premium zone. We have already have a sweep of liquidity in the supply. Price reacts one time and then falls or fails. From the daily time frame, I expect a bearish move. To enter in this bearish move, we will have to wait to the deliver of the point of interest. The delivery will simply be a change of character or break of structure in the lower time frame that indicates to use the probability of the price to go down. Okay, so basically as you can see, yeah. So this is where it means we can't see a little bit as we are quite it's quite small for us here, so we have to zoom in. So this is basically where he says that in the sweep of liquidity. Okay, so the four hour time frame, as we can see here, this is the day time frame, as we can see here. Yeah. And now you can see, you can clearly see that, yeah, you can clearly see this is where it makes that change of character here on the four hour, as you didn't see it as much on the day, but now it's more visible on the four hour. On the hour four time frame, price is bullish. Mm. We can see that the sweep in the daily is a break of structure on the hour four time frame. Price looks to be looks to lose bullish power on the hour four. As we know, price is moving from supply to demand to rebalance the price. Hmm. Here we can see that the above the decisional demand will have resting in balance. Yeah. That can be used to rebalance the price if it wants to go up. up yeah. Okay. Knowing that, we could follow our daily time frame and look for sell opportunities even if we are not in pro trend on the four. Hour four. Okay. Yeah. So this is the 50 minutes that we win from the day to the 4 hour to the 50 minute. So those are the time frames that what is using. Time frames yeah. now. Okay. So you can see this is where it probably hit that 4 hour supply on top. 
now it has a change of character internal break of structure which is the 15 minutes break of structure and not your overall one as you can see as a weak low comes to this one as you can see it's still making a lower lows and lower highs basically on the 15 minute as well yeah it has a extreme price so this is where a possible place if you want to still count the counter three you can still go up on the pro three pro three more words <laughs> okay so on the you, huh? so you, so <laughs> on the 15 minute time frame price is bullish and it makes a bearish change of character on the bullish legs we have almost no imbalance on the bullish leg yeah no no imbalance except for the one before the four hour demand knowing that we are knowing that we know that price could likely join the four hour demand before potentially a move to the upside okay as we can see after the change of character price acts as well at the supply that was created by the change of character after we have to we have an internal break of structure and a lot of building of liquidity before the extreme supply this extreme supply will be a place to look for an entry the first tp will be at the weak low or the far on the four hour demand and the second tp will be at the four hour demand on the 15 minute i mean and on the four hour demand as the big picture is bearish and we are in an extreme supply or a protected low we could expect a nice bearish move okay this is basically what he just said. I would think to pause this and I'll give you two seconds to pause this and pause this basically. So I think this is where you can read it off yourself again. So this is the one minute time frame. Mm. So the this one. would probably be like your entry point. Entry point, yeah. So you're just checking those one as potential point of entry. Mm. No. On the one minute time frame, simple change of character will be momentum. Mm. Supply at the buy to sell weak, the break even will be on the one minute structure. Break yes. of structure. The one minute break of structure. The result of the trade, as you can see at top, this is what it meant here for a quick bearish. And then this is the result of that trade, as you can see that wind, work all here, and then the button. Using all the concepts of of ending on the market. So this is basically just another view of this, as you can see the 15 minute, the one minute, the 15 minute time frame. As you can see, price gives a very nice bearish move without the high time frame picture, it's very difficult to know that, okay. Always keep in mind that the big picture will have more influence than the lower pictures, yes. Total trade for this was a 1 to 22 return risk to reward with the potential. It depends on how many percentage you are taking uh, taking per TP. So it depends on yeah, 1 to 2 or so much. I personally take profit between 30 or 40 percent, okay. This is depending on you, yeah. When price is efficient on the left side, it will run run fast basically, okay. This is and that's basically today's chapter. Yeah, today's so, chapters. Today's chapters, yeah. So, like I said, you're probably gonna, if you made it this far, you probably watch the first few chapters, like, in, like I mentioned, always go back to it because I doubt everybody's gonna get it in the first take. So, and if you randomly came across this video, I suggest you actually go yeah. back and watch those videos. Because chapters. a lot of these words might not have like context for you, so yeah. Mm. So I think we will end it off there today, guys. Yes. We will spot you in the next one. Mm -hmm. And until next time, peace, peace. out.